Hello, and welcome to another episode of Stay Tuned to the Zoo. Before we jump into today's episode, I'm going to challenge you to do a mystery drawing with me. And you will need a few things to get started. Go ahead and get a piece of paper and something to write with or draw with. When you're ready to go, I'm going to give you a few instructions and you're going to follow along on your paper. Are you ready? All right. Your first step is to draw a medium-sized oval in the middle of your paper. If you'd like to think of it as being about the size of a, your fist, that's a great place to start. Connected to the bottom of that oval, draw four long lines. It's probably helpful to make them about equally as long as each other. Jump to the right side of your oval. Connected to that oval, draw a curved line heading out and downwards. And at the bottom of that line, draw a few short lines. You can think of them almost arranged like a fan. Now, jump to the left side of your oval. Connected to your oval, draw a worm shape heading upwards. Do you have any guesses yet? Connected to that worm shape, draw an oval that's smaller than your original oval. All right, here's the last step. Go back to your original oval and connect it to the top of your oval. Draw two gumdrop shapes right next to each other. Can you guess who we're visiting today? Hopefully you said the camels. Let's go. Hello to you all and welcome to Lincoln Park Zoo. We are so glad that you're here with us today. Have you ever seen an animal and wondered to yourself, why in the world does that animal look that way? Many animals have strange and wild adaptations and today on Stay Tuned to the Zoo, we are going to plod on in and meet one of these wildly adapted species, the camels. From their characteristic humps to their shaggy fur and even their wide feet, almost everything you notice on the body of a camel helps to tell the story of how they are adapted to extreme environments, including the sometimes harsh winters here in Chicago. First, allow me to introduce you to the four camels who live right here at Lincoln Park Zoo. There are three adult females, Mira, Indy, and Nissan, and one adult male, Scooter, who live together in a social group called a flock or a caravan. They have multiple spaces called yards here at Lincoln Park Zoo. So while we're chatting, you may notice them staying around in one place or they can move about their habitat. The choice is completely theirs. When it comes to the two main types of camels, Bactrian and Dromedary, there's a neat trick to tell which camel you're looking at by their humps. I will teach you the secret. Bactrian camels have two humps, sort of like the two humps in the letter B for Bactrian. Dromedary camels only have one hump, very similar to the one hump in the letter D for Dromedary. Two humps for Bactrian, one hump for Dromedary. Regardless of how many humps the camel has, they all serve the same function, which is to store fat. There is a common misconception that camels store water in their humps, and that is an incredibly easy mistake to make because the fat that's stored in those humps can be converted into energy and water during times when resources are scarce. Now, traversing across extreme environments is no big deal for Bactrian camels. Living in habitats like the Gobi Desert and the steppe habitats of Central and East Asia, they must be well adapted to the extreme environments of the desert. Oftentimes we think of the desert being very hot. What's a surprising part of that is that the desert can also get extremely cold. As an example, the Gobi Desert ranges from negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter months up to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. That is an incredible range to be able to be adapted to. 
Camels have thick, shaggy fur with individual hairs up to 10 inches in length. That's almost from my wrist to my elbow for one single hair. They're able to shed this coat pretty drastically when the seasons change from colder to warmer. By being able to drop that fur so quickly, it helps them to adjust their coat and be well adapted to the cold and to the warm. This is incredibly important during those hot summer months because camels have next to no sweat glands. This is another adaptation that they have to conserve fluids in their body. Other desert dwelling adaptations that they have are nostrils that can close tight to keep out sand, bushy eyebrows and long eyelashes to protect their eyes, and even big, wide foot pads that keep them from sinking down into the sand as they move across their habitat. This foot adaptation is especially impressive because camels are huge. In fact, they can be up to about seven feet tall at the hump and weigh up to 1,800 pounds. These wide foot pads keep their long and heavy legs from dipping way down into the shifting sands of the desert. Now, even Chicago winters are no match for Bactrian camels. A question that we get really frequently here at Lincoln Park Zoo is what happens with the animals in the winter? And that is a great question because it can get very cold here in Chicago in the winter months. We get snow, ice, and below freezing temperatures. In the winter months, there are changes to husbandry or the care of animals. But the unique thing about camels is that they don't need anything special at all in the winter. We have something called a temperature matrix which guides us on when animals can be outdoors or when they may feel more comfortable in their behind the scenes spaces that are temperature controlled. Because camels are already so well adapted to extreme temperatures, they can be outside almost every single day of the year, including the hottest summer days and the coldest winter days. Some species receive additional bedding material and even increased portions of their diet. Since camels are already excellent at conserving their energy, they don't need extra food or extra bedding material. While camels can survive extreme conditions, here at Lincoln Park Zoo, they always have access to fresh water, their vet approved diet, shelter from the elements, and plenty of choices on how and where to spend their time in their habitat with the rest of their caravan. Thank you so much for joining us today to learn more about how camels are adapted to extreme environments through their specialized fat storing humps, unique features like bushy eyebrows and long eyelashes, and the ability to withstand Chicago winters right here at Lincoln Park Zoo. All right, we just learned all about how camels are animals of extremes, but just how extreme are they? Let's go ahead and visualize three of their superpowers. Jordan told us that camels can go long stretches without food and water. But what happens when they do need to refuel? When a camel gets thirsty and it's time to take a drink of water, they can drink about 30 gallons of water in just 13 minutes. But what does 30 gallons look like? This bin is a 15 gallon bin. A gallon is just the same as that gallon of milk in your fridge at home. So to fill this up, I would need 15 gallons of water, 15 gallons of milk, and then another one filled with 15 gallons of water, and that would be what a camel can drink in 13 minutes. Now as humans, it's recommended that we drink about half a gallon of water per day, spread out over the day. So in order to drink the same amount of water as a camel, it would take us 60 days or two months just to drink the equal amount. And 30 gallons of water is not always easy to come by in the Gobi Desert. So it's a good thing that the fat stored in their humps can be converted to water when needed. Speaking of humps, how much do those things weigh? The largest Bactrian camels are going to weigh around 1,800 pounds. Most Bactrian camels are going to hover in the 1,000 to 1,300 pound range. They're pretty big. Each hump can store up to 80 pounds of fat. On a Bactrian camel, there are two humps, so that means they're carrying 160 pounds of fat on their back. That's about 13% of their whole body weight. Now, what would that look like for me? I'm 5'3", 
The average 5'3 female weighs around 120 pounds. So 13% of that weight would be 16 pounds. Let's see what that looks like. I have a few tree stumps here. Each of them weighs about four pounds, so 16 pounds total, and a backpack. I'm gonna load it up and see what it feels like to have a camel's hump. Doesn't feel like a lot, but I definitely wouldn't want to carry this across the Gobi Desert. Do you ever wonder why some animals have large, wide foot pads and others don't? Remember Jordan telling us that those wide foot pads help camels travel in their desert homes. But how does that work? Let me show you. I have here two containers filled with sand and two blocks. This wooden square block is going to represent the large, wide foot pad of a camel. And this more narrow cylinder shaped block is going to represent the hoof feet of an animal like a mountain goat. If I place this block into the sand and apply pressure, it doesn't sink. Let's try it with a cylinder. I'll apply some pressure. It goes right in. Spreading the pressure across that foot pad allows camels to travel across the sand much more comfortably without sinking in. Think about a time that you went to the beach or maybe visited a sandbox at your park. Was it hard for you to walk in the sand? You might need camel foot pads in the future to help. Did you learn anything new about camels today? Share your favorite fact with us in the comments. We're so glad you joined us for Stay Tuned to the Zoo. Subscribe to our channel to get updates on new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday.